What you doing down there? This is March in the Milwaukee area. The Midwest, it's super cold. And these are what the tennis courts look like. But I wish I wasn't here because tennis courts are lucky if the nets are up at this point in time and the windscreens are definitely not up. And in this specific court, got turned to a mini ice rink. However, there's a state I really, really want to visit. And there's a major tournament going on on the west coast of the United States. They planned out so well. And this is what tennis is like in California, Indian Wells. <laughs> So just entered Indian Wells. Um, it's actually not that big of a line. There was an issue when it came to getting the tickets because the app was being overloaded because everyone was using it. But to the right of the main entrance, I believe that's the east entrance, there are shops. There's the uh, official Indian Wells merchandise. There is the tennis warehouse, which I'm about to enter soon. And what's really nice about the tennis warehouse shop is that there's a court, it seems to be like a former practice court, that you could actually demo some strings and racks on, which is fantastic. And then there's other small ones like the tennis warehouse, shoe specific uh, tent or shop. I don't know if it's even a tent, but it's a shop. And there's a feel of one, which is pretty cool. So not as many shops as I thought. Usually you'd think that there's like a tennis express one or maybe even a tennis point slash Midwest sport. But it's still pretty cool seeing that there's retailers here uh, that are, you know, engaging with the fans, engaging with uh, people that love tennis and kind of marketing um, their online retail presence. So something that's kind of underrated when it comes to these type of events, specifically tennis, because it's not like an NFL or NBA game where there's only one thing, there's multiple things going on on top of the Stadium 1 and Stadium 2 courts, the premier courts uh, for big name players like Gyrios, Federer, uh, Nadal, Djokovic, they're all in the same area. But um, these rest areas are pretty cool because it gets really hot no matter where you guys are watching specifically tennis, where people are just resting in the shade, having a few drinks, eating, and then, you know, just planning out what the next step is because even though it's a grounds pass, there's a lot of stuff to do, especially not only if you're just a tennis spectator, but if you're an amateur tennis player yourself, there's a lot of stuff going on. So especially for the introverts that I'm not, shout out to Ian over there, especially for the introverts, um, the people that need to re-energize their energy to do other activities, it's a really good, nice place for a spot in the shade, in this case, to just kind of recharge and recoup and get ready for the next thing. But I think I am ready for either a beer or the tennis warehouse demo. What do you guys think? Beer or tennis warehouse demo? All right, beer it is. So Land Shark is probably one of the best, um, almost like island beers, island lagers that they have um, out there in mass production. So definitely do appreciate a nice uh, small cap beer, AKA non-IPA, because you know, it's, it's California. It's 75. It's amazing today. So nice little light beer to fuel up before I demo some tennis rack is at the tennis warehouse court. What? So that was actually really fun. Um, it's really nice that Tennis Warehouse um, places their tent right next to a practice court, uh, what it seems like a practice court, for regular consumers and prospects to just be able to demo rackets and strings. So it's really nice of them. Um, got recognized by uh, a few people uh, and a few people from Tennis Warehouse. So uh, I had some scuff with Tennis Warehouse on the legal side. I'll leave a link to that video in this corner if you haven't checked it out already. 
Um, but it's very nice of them and you know, they're very friendly. They're just normal human beings like us. I mean, we have some disagreements about some business practices and that's fine, but overall it was a really, really cool time. So if you guys are going to like any type of like major tennis tournament, don't just visit tennis warehouses, just visit the retailers because it's pretty cool. Um, and you get to interact with not only the employees who are probably gonna be tennis fanatics and uh, tennis enthusiasts, but also the other prospects and consumers there that are just looking at stuff and just talking with other people. It's a really friendly vibe. I mean, this place is starting to pop now. It's Friday evening, almost four o'clock. So this is definitely starting to look like a, a Grand Slam event. On top of just normal rest areas, there's almost always going to be some sort of main resting area for people to just kind of chill out at, watch some big screens, see the score line. And the Indian Wells one is actually a lot bigger than I thought it would be. There's probably about 200, 250 people you know, sitting on a bench, a table, or lawn chairs, just relaxing, recovering their energy, and watching the, I think, four, three or four big main screens that are being displayed right now before they go on to the other activities. So it's pretty cool. So it's pretty amazing here at Indian Wells, which is a very, very small city in kind of a chain of like towns in the desert because this part of California used to be a desert. And there is a reason why Indian Wells is called the six or fifth Grand Slam. I think Miami is the other uh, ATP and WTA 1000. And the feel here is very much like a a big tournament, but it's not that big, spacious-wise. I could just get up close with people like Riley Opelka, Felix Ajur Alassim, who is warming up over there, and a lot of these top 100 people that are practicing on about a quarter of the land that this tournament is hosted at, because this Indian Wells uh, garden, tennis garden is actually called, is actually used by the community when it's not being used for professional tournaments. amazing because a ground pass for me only cost $30. I think that's the general public um, admission for just walking the grounds. Stadium 1 and 2 are the only ones that require um, passes or separate tickets to get in. I think Stadium 2 could actually go in the upper tier seats uh, for free if you have just have the general grounds pass. But right now it is about 68, maybe 69 nice degrees. and. It's a little bit windy um, on TV from what the Discord is saying. My Discord, if you guys don't have a link to my Discord, I'll leave a link to that down in the section below where people talk about pro tennis and uh, other tennis related stuff. They're saying that on TV, it looks super bad on the stadium courts um, where Osaka is playing, I believe right now, she might be up a set. But yeah, there is a breeze, there's a little bit of a gust, but to be honest, it's actually not that bad, at least on the practice courts. So I'm just gonna try and get a beer now because uh, I'm thirsty, and then I just want to check out the other uh, stores at Indian Wells.
So I'm literally first row on practice session with Sasha, Pus uh, Sasha Pulik. Um, I think he's uh, Kazakhstan, um, Kazakhstan player, but he's a really clean ball. He's six foot six, and I don't know who this gentleman he's hitting against, but he's a pretty damn good player as well. Average best. So it's just <laughs> really cool that he's right there. Gonna be on Tennis Channel TV, bro. And in California, keep in mind that there is no actual, like, <laughs> there's no actual humidity. Um, it gets a little bit windy, um, a little bit often, kind of like it's a little bit breezy right now. But it's pretty nice because even though it might be like 85 and you're working your butt off and playing a lot of tennis, you're not going to be sweating nearly as much. You're not going to be as tired as quickly as you would be as you would maybe in the East Coast or the Midwest of the United States where humidity is kind of a thing during the summer. So. It's, it was a little bit hot, almost 75, 80 earlier in the day, but now it's obviously cooling down because it's about five o'clock right now. So this is perfect tennis weather, but you know, kind of what the locals do, they always wear long sleeves to protect themselves from the sun and sunglasses, which I need to buy. Just like any major tournament in tennis, golf, NBA, any type of sport. There's a lot of shops here as well. And one thing that is super, super special to me about Indian Wells from what I've seen even just so far of being here for only three hours is the backdrop. Now keep in mind, we are in a desert and it's typically dry, typically fairly hot, but that's possible because the mountains are basically blocking most clouds to just dump the moisture onto the top of the clouds and then have the rest of that storm path, that flow of weather, just be absolutely dry, and that's why there's the desert here. So there's basically two types of mountain ranges. There's ones that are lust and foresty, and there actually is some white snow you'll see at the top of the mountains, and I believe that is the West Mountain. And then there's a second type of mountains, which is the dry, rocky, you know, sand-like mountains. It is a beautiful, beautiful backdrop on the practice courts and the arena courts. If you guys have seen on TV or on YouTube, the other tennis YouTube content creators, it's just an amazing sight of just tennis court, just nothing but mountains and desert in the background. I actually haven't eaten all day. Didn't even eat breakfast, so I'm gonna eat sushi. So, I've said this a lot of times and I'm gonna keep saying it again. I cannot emphasize that if you're a tennis fan, whether you're a player or just appreciate the sport, go to the practice courts because literally right behind me is, I think he's like number 15 in the world, definitely top 20 or 30. Uh, Diego Schwartzman is right over there. It's right here, small little crowd, gathered around him, watching him play. And Diego Schwartzman is playing with uh, uh, Bias. I believe he's also from Argentina. So, nice little setup that they have over here. Goes to say, without actually saying it, but I'm gonna say it anyway. It's getting a little chilly now in the desert and sun is setting. And you know what I do when the sun sets? I drink and eat. I gotta find some sustenance and nutrients. 
little bit of a pro tip. If you guys are in Indian Wells on Stadium 2, there are two restaurants upstairs. Um, I believe it's the third or second tier. It's called Nuru, which is a Japanese restaurant, and then there's Fresh Agave, which is what I'm eyeing up right now. And what's nice about these restaurants is that if you get a seat, you can actually watch Stadium 2 at a pretty good angle, a little bit higher up though, on the sideline, and watch the matches actually play out. The only thing is you have to spend at least $100, but here's the view. Well, it's getting towards the uh, beginning of the nighttime, and it's about a 15 minute Uber drive for me to get back to Airbnb with Ian from Essential Tennis. But overall, like it's getting a little bit chillier. It's still beautiful. Um, you probably need to wear pants or a long sleeve like I am to kind of last through like the night sessions because even though it does get pretty hot during the day and still not humid, it does drop in temperature pretty significantly once the sun goes down. But again, still an absolutely beautiful sight. So I'm gonna head home and I cannot wait to visit again next year. And I can't wait to visit other professional tennis venues, both big and small, because this is just an absolute blast. So if you guys haven't already, do me a favor, hit like, hit subscribe, and hit that notification bell for new original tennis content. And hopefully I'll see you guys sometime in one of these major events. So stop by, say hi, talk with me, take a selfie with me. As always, happy hitting.